Hello everyone. We are so happy to be back with our series Unmasking Modern Spiritualism. And as usual, we welcome you uh, in the name of the Lord because we do this for Him. It's not our own thoughts. It's not our own opinion. It's uh, for the glory of the Lord in showing us the deception that uh, the enemy is doing to capture us back to his side. So let's start with this with a prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you called us to present this subject to your children. Lord, whatever they do, wherever they are, whatever spiritual condition they are in, you love them and you have great plans for all of us. And so, this is an, an act of love in your part, using us as your instruments in relaying your message to those whom you know need to hear this presentation. So guide us, Lord, and may your message ring loud and clear to those who need this reminder. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello, brothers and sisters. So we are back. And today, our episode is about deliverance. However, it's about deliverance found only through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So let's get started. Now, as you can tell by this picture on the screen, the person with the microphone is using a cross. Sometimes a Bible is even used and they are attempting to exercise and cast out um, an impure evil spirit from this woman in the picture. Now many people have even made it a career. Many people have made it a ministry. They make money off of this type of thing. However, brothers and sisters, I will have you to know that this actually, in many forms, is a scam. That is correct. It's a scam, brothers and sisters. One of the most major deceptions out there is many people with their ministries claiming to deliver in the name of Jesus or sometimes not even in the name of Jesus, claiming that they have the ability and the power to deliver people from infirmities and evil spirits. Brothers and sisters, we are going to dive into this topic in a major way today and uncover it from all angles. One of the major deceptions to start is that sometimes the enemy puts something on you or an agent of the enemy puts something on you so you're sick or you're out of your mind and you're possessed and then that person then comes and takes it off of you and you then think because you're deceived at this point that the person has the power and the ability to cast things out to heal and do all sorts of miracles brothers and sisters this is a deception so mark 6 7 the niv version reads calling the 12 to him he he meaning jesus began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits now this passage is talking about when Jesus Christ sent out the disciples and he gave them authority to cast out um, evil spirits from people. However, what we'll point out here is the highlighted sections. He, Jesus, gave them the authority. Therefore, brothers and sisters, people cannot go around casting out anything or delivering people from from things if Jesus himself have not given the authority for them to do so. That person 
doing the deliverance needs to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, needs to be saved through Jesus Christ. And the person receiving the deliverance needs to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and be saved with Jesus Christ. Thus, the deliverance aspect of it all comes from Jesus himself. Pastor, what do you have to say about all of this? In the book of Acts, there's a record of seven sons of Sceva. They observe Apostle Paul uh, healing and delivering people from evil spirits in the name of Jesus. So this seven sons of Sceva, Sceva was the one in charge of the synagogue, they said, why not learn how to do it? This mm -hmm. is exciting. Mm -hmm. And so they observed Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was always saying, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, mm -hmm. rise up and walk if the person is lame. Or if the person is uh, demon-possessed, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get out. And so they practiced among themselves and uh, themselves and then uh, when they are already ready they look for how they can practice what they thought they they learned mm -hmm. and certainly there was a person who was under the influence of the evil spirit moaning and strong mm -hmm. and so i guess the eldest was the one who gave the cue and they said uh we don't know Jesus. We know Paul. So let's, let's do this. In the name of Jesus, as preached by Paul, mm -hmm. get out. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened? When they were ready, they surrounded this guy. And then simultaneously and at the same time, they said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, as preached by Paul, get out. And you know what happened? The evil spirit from the guy jumped on them. Attacked them. Mm -hmm. Attacked them. Until they got bruised, their bones got broken, and they went out of the place naked and wounded and bruised. This tells us uh, that we don't have any authority. Mm -hmm. Unless Jesus gave us the authority, just like in the case of the disciples and of Apostle Paul, they can do it because God granted them authority. Jesus was with them through the Holy Spirit. But if we are not in a good relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. and we don't receive that authority, the deliverance is fake. Yeah. It's a scam. Or they might be friends mm -hmm. of the evil spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why the evil spirit follow them. It's also possible that if they are indeed not friend of the evil spirit, when they come on the evil spirit, they will be mad at them. Mm -hmm. And just like the seven sons of Skega, they will go out of the place bruised with broken bones and naked. So it tells us uh, that it's not a joke to be delivered by somebody whom we know is not authorized or in right relationship with Jesus or else they are just scamming you especially if they ask you for money yes then you know that is not from the Lord yes very well said pastor now let's dive into our Bibles a little bit deeper let's go to Mark chapter 9 verse 38 to 40 and it reads teacher said John we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop, because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in, in the next moment say anything bad about me, for whoever is not against us is for us. So, brothers and sisters, to elaborate on what our dear Pastor Dan just said, um, because I know many people may look at this verse and say, well, wait a minute, someone was successfully able to cast out um, 
demons and impure spirits from someone and they weren't one of the 12 and they weren't given authority, so to speak. But brothers and sisters, if you really read and dissect this passage, you will see that Jesus says, he says, whoever does a miracle in my name can in the, can't in the next moment say anything bad about me. Meaning that that person, that's implying that that person is a believer for whoever is not against us is for us. So Jesus is stating that that person does indeed know and is a follower of Jesus Christ. Therefore, that person having a relationship with Jesus, Jesus, then again, the Holy Spirit living and indwelling within that person, the Lord granted them the, the ability to be able to successfully cast out that those impure spirits. That's someone who has a relationship with Jesus and that Jesus used to be the vessel to be able to do that. The followers of Jesus were not only the 12 disciples correct there were the 72 and there were others who don't belong to the nucleus of jesus who spent time daily with jesus but there are those who believe jesus have a relationship with god and yet they are not in the inner circle of christ's discipleship so they too may have the power because they are not against Jesus. Amen. So the reason why they can do it, it's because they have a connection with the Lord. Amen. And they don't do it for money. Amen. They don't do it for selfish gain or selfish motives. Now, brothers and sisters, take a look at the screen. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. This is something that we hear so often many people say it it's in many songs and it's gotten to the point where it's grown so much that people have their own definition of what this statement actually means brothers and sisters when it's talking about breaking every chain that jesus the name of jesus has the power to break every chain it's talking about the chain of sin and bondage of sin when a person gives their life their life over to to jesus christ accepts him as their lord and savior they then are free from the curse behind the law and from the bondage of sin and a life of death it's satan who put us in chain as slaves to the wickedness and our uh, iniquities that you want to do good you don't you want to break away from the dominion of satan and you cannot because chain is a word that is symbolical it's not uh, something that ties us with something it's uh, how we allowed satan to manipulate us to control us for a long time Mm -hmm. that we can hardly hardly get out There's that's sin. the chain yes and it's only jesus that can break that such chain amen and to take it a step further brothers and sisters many people in spiritualism know or will go as far well many people in spiritualism know that there are certain spirits unclean spirits that are associated specifically with certain sins and that that's how people in this in spiritualism in that world think and so if a person is suffering for example from sins of sexual immorality so they say that there is a spirit associated with those type of sins and therefore if you cast out um, that spirit that's acting around you or within you or in your bloodline you can essentially break free from the sin of those sins of sexual immorality now that concept of all of that at the end of the day you can't just stop something only jesus we have no power within ourselves brothers and sisters whatsoever only the lord a relationship with jesus christ is the only thing um as you continue to grow in christ and 
put on the righteousness of Christ, as you continue to grow in Christ, then he empowers you through his Holy Spirit dwelling in you and acting in your life to stop those sins and break every chain. That, that's the concept behind it all, brothers and sisters. And so anyone who says anything else, um, it's just another form of deception. We said it again on many other episodes that if the enemy can't get you one way, he'll try to get you another. And so imagine being someone. I remember when I first came out of spiritualism, I, it was quite a transition before I had an accurate understanding of who Jesus Christ is and who he says I am and, um, and started to really truly read God's word and get a better understanding and renew my mind through his word and become sanctified through his word before any of those steps started to occur. And, at, and I'm still growing. We all are. But when I first came out of spiritualism, my mind needed to be renewed. I had inadequate understanding of things. And the enemy kept trying to use that because there were many times before I received full deliverance where um, I would be watching something on YouTube or some or reading something and trying to give myself deliverance and there were times where I was successful and I thought, oh, wow, I have the power and I have the ability to be able to, to do this. And no, that's not correct. It's a deception because then if the enemy tries to fool you in that way and deceive you in that way, you then will maybe launch a whole ministry because you think that you have the power and the ability to do this and then be in darkness or a form of darkness. Um, because anything that the enemy can put in between you and Jesus, where you exalt yourself and your abilities of which we have none, we need to live a submitted and a surrendered life. You can't live a submitted or surrendered life if you think that you have the power or the ability to do anything. So that, my friends, is a deception. Pastor Dan, do you have anything um, to add before? Letting you believe that there's a certain spirit that controls you so you do sin, specific sins. This is a deception. Mm -hmm. First of all, the tendency is already in us because uh, we allowed ourselves to follow our inclination, mm -hmm. our direction towards sin. Yes. Satan has no power to direct our thoughts and to compel us. It's only because we okay. allowed ourselves to follow his suggestions, mm -hmm. his, his leadings. Mm -hmm. And the more we do things uh, that Satan suggests, the more we submit our will to him, mm. the more deeper we go into slavery to sin. Yes. So the Bible's uh, strategy is submit yourself to God. Mm. You cannot resist the evil spirit because he's stronger than you. Mm -hmm. There's no such person who can deliver you from the evil spirit because for Thousands and thousands of years is already ex expert in doing this. Mm -hmm. The only one that can deliver us is Jesus himself. That's why Amen. submit yourself to God. Mm -hmm. And then you can resist. Yes, James 4, 7. <laughs> our, our favorite, favorite verse. verse. <laughs> resist the devil mm -hmm. only if you have submitted yourself to God. Amen. I, can I cannot deliver you. Mm -hmm. I can entrust you to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't have the power. Yes. It's only God. Even Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. he said, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So it's only the power of God mm -hmm. because he is more powerful than the enemy. Amen. He picks the battle and he faces Satan mm -hmm. and fights it for us. Amen. Then Satan is defeated. Amen. Very well said, Pastor Dan. That's why the Bible says the battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. 
Okay, so Psalms 3, 8, friends, it reads, from the Lord, from the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. Amen. So as we see here, we're reiterating that true deliverance can only come from the Lord himself, brothers and sisters. And so with that said, we pray that before you go dabbling and entrusting yourself to someone who has a deliverance ministry or is asking for money for deliverance or claiming to be whatever they want to call themselves, we pray that you will get down on your knees and pray to the Lord and ask the Lord for guidance because the only way, and take it from someone who needed to be delivered herself, that the only way that you can achieve and experience true freedom and deliverance is in Jesus Christ, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Even the use of the Bible. Mm-hmm. The Bible, we call it the holy book, if the Spirit of the Lord is using the Bible. I, I will not suggest, mm -hmm. but if someone tries to burn the Bible, will it mm -hmm. burn? The leaves of the Bible? Yeah. Potentially. So, if the Lord doesn't try to <laughs> get rid of them first for doing something this, like that. This is... <laughs> A book like anybody else mm -hmm. unless empowered by God. Amen. So this Bible mm -hmm. by itself, you cannot use this and say, Kathy, mm -hmm. by the power of the Bible, <laughs> mm -hmm. no, it has no power with itself. <laughs> even mm -hmm. the cross, mm -hmm. even though we see priests and some uh, people use the cross, yes. it's just an ordinary object. That once mm -hmm. we are deceived that the power is from there. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes when we have the cross mm -hmm. and put it on someone that is... Uh, and the enemy, in order to deceive us, mm -hmm. he feels like he is scared of the cross. What mm -hmm. is the cross? It's what happened at the cross. It's <laughs> just a reminder that <laughs> in the cross, the cross, Christ died mm -hmm. to... Redeem us from our sin. Amen. It's the, it's uh, what does the cross represents. Amen. It's not the cross itself. Correct. So if you use the cross without its connection with the meaning of the cross, mm -hmm. it's nothing. Yes, very well said, Pastor. So brothers and sisters, submit yourselves to the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We pray that you are blessed today by today's episode and that if you need to be delivered and you need help, that you go to a church to, to find help so that you can learn the proper way to truly have a relationship with Jesus Christ because only through Jesus Christ is true deliverance found. Shall we pray? Yes. please. Father God, we come to you humbly, Lord. We want to thank you so much, Father, for guiding us through this lesson about deliverance, Lord, and in the fact that true deliverance only comes from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for everyone out there, all of our viewers, Lord. If anyone is suffering, Father, we pray that you pr impress upon them, Lord, what it is that they should do, Father, and where they should go so that they can seek help. May you guide them, Lord, so that they can go to the Word of God, Lord, and um, and that they would come to you in prayer, Father, and ask you to show them step by step how to have a real relationship with you, Lord, and ask you to come into their hearts today, Lord, and reveal yourself to them in a mighty way. Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name, Lord, and this is all for your glory. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.